Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu, and we're back on Sunday for more Haruhi Suzumiya. Last week we watched four episodes, which was maybe too much. We're probably gonna watch two episodes today. Yay! Um, also, fair warning, I'm kind of exhausted, but we'll get through it. It should be a little bit loopy. Anyway, um, we're starting off with Mystery Sign, which was originally broadcast right in the middle of that two-part murder mystery on a locked, closed, de like, a deserted island. Um, I, I don't understand why it was broadcast there, because it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's not just a two-parter, it's a two-parter where our characters go to a specific location and are there, and then we cut away from that in the middle to go somewhere else and do a different thing. I don't understand why it's there. Uh, regardless, the watch order that we're using has it placed immediately after Remote Island Syndrome, and so we're going to go with that. So we're watching Mystery Sign and then uh, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya 4, and that'll be our day, probably. Um, after that, we'll have, I think, three episodes left of the first season, and then we jump into second season stuff, which will be its own whole deal that we'll have to deal with. Uh, and we'll deal with that when we deal with it. For now, we're watching Mystery Sign. I've got the episode up. This is listed as episode 7 in a broadcast order, but we've lost count of episodes at this point. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to watch it. Cool. Uh, there will be two versions of this reaction. Picture-in-picture -picture version available in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep timer to count you down. Let's go right now. Of course. <sighs> Taking her test. Yeah, already finished. God. God. Literally me on all multiple choice type tests. I just finished them really fast. My tea is still too hot. Ruhi. I really like this track as a background track. They still met together. Almost like they're having fun. Hmm. Oh, this is where she... Okay. <laughs> Scribbling around in MS Paint. Ugh. Ugh. S O S. Done. Hmm. <laughs> so many negatives. Yeah. <laughs> no. And she comments on his inner monologue, right? And this will. Since at night. Mm, now that would work. Look at OnlyFans. It works great. Might be a problem with putting up lewd pictures of a child. Literal child. Hmm. 
<laughs> Framing. <laughs> do the computer wizardry. Just, just do it. God, I, I remember this episode like hitting me hard. This is, this is how it feels to be a freelance web designer. A hundred percent. Just do it. God. Beautiful. Of course. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Mm. Hi, Yuki. Yeah, like a lamp. a long list mm. I love how specific that that joke is smart mm. Mm. All right, doing things for people. Just sort of throw it there. Mm. Tick, 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 tick. Weird. How did that happen? That doesn't happen. That fully doesn't happen. All right. New file, different version, still happens. Weird. Why? Why would they do this? Very fitting punishment. <laughs> Wait, is that Saber's costume over on the side? I'm pretty sure it is. Just for a flash. Because it's you, Kion. It's always you. Nope. Hmm. Can't figure it out. <laughs> oh, just like being a web dev. <laughs> and Joe. <laughs> hmm. This character. <laughs> I made the poster as terrible as possible. Mm. <laughs> and now you're doing it. That's a problem if you told the police. 
parents? Crap. Crap. <laughs> Fully no. Where is that? <laughs> yeah, I had no clue. <laughs> Oh. It was a great layout. Angrily. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No need for a name, eh? Ah. <laughs> I love the newspaper sequence. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh my god. The slow focus. No. It just sounds better when you tell people it's a bonus. <laughs> I, how does that make sense? Sure. How dare he? Yeah, really. Everything must be fine. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Truly, for those who slip through the cracks. It's a, a classic... Cut out emoji Haruhi. <laughs> One room mansion data. Probably a key. Oh, my God, Haruhi. Uh. Shots from above. No bland shots. Uh, thanks, Yuki. That's cold. Well, it wasn't. Thanks, Yuki. Just rewrite reality a little bit. No, of course not. She deserved it. <laughs> Disappearance diary. Something's bad. No, <laughs> sorry. This is a problem. Crap. It's already expired. Okay. Stop it, Harvey. Yeah. That's what she said? Mm. Don't eat that. Stop eating that, Harvey. Of course you are. God damn it. We cut from her to eating to her hungry. Such a perfect encapsulation of this fucking character. So infuriating. 
Bye. All right, now we can actually get to work. Hi. Nothing. Close the space. <laughs> oh shit unfortunate desert not anymore welcome to weird desert space Well, you want to try to be? Terrifying. I was pointing. Ha! Yes. <laughs> of course also helpful in situations true hello giant fucking cricket oh no great use of sort of cg for the time Oh, okay. Ah! That's a fucking sun! It's a mini sun! So it's an eldritch abomination using human brain power to manifest itself in a non reality. Ah! Sick. Let's go. Fucking volleyball. Is that a intentional little thing? I think so. All right, now it looks jank. Fuck. Fucking awesome, though. Ah. <laughs> uh, welcome to the video game. It's Final Fantasy now. Yeah, okay, it is fully a reference. I forgot about the second one. Just, just his attack names are just names of anime that KyoAni has made. Truly, out of this world. Goodbye, Cricket. Goodbye, Desert Place. Oh, indeed. Hi, buddy. That's a lot of time. It's 
super powerful. Insane. Yeah, it's super tiny. Absolutely she is. All of it goes too well. Mm. Mm. That is the issue, isn't it? It all fits too perfectly. You might want to. Well... Nah. 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 Nah, you're just a loser, dude. She just happens to like you for some reason. Ah. Uh, why am I here? It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? Why are any of us here? You know, like, is there a god watching over us and everything? It did. Nah, too cold. Shock! The internet are breeding grounds for evil gods? What? What? Tabune. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Thanks, Itsuki. Well, hard to say. Ah, oh, yes. The takeover voice actor? Weird. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing like that. How did that happen? Crazy. Hmm. That would be exactly her style. Whoosh. Was it you or was it for Haruhi? Hmm. I wonder what book that is. It's only a Japanese cover, so I don't know. Ah, I like that episode a lot. It's got tons of problems, but it flows so, so crisply from like normal to weird to normal.
Classic. Wham. I like this episode. Um, it's a, a it's a compli- it's a okay. It's a simple as episode masquerading as a complicated episode. Weird event occurs. Lots of weird little things and little details that keep us intrigued or keep me intrigued. Kind of like an ooh piece of candy, ooh piece of candy sort of situation. Um, like little bits of interesting stuff, little bits of weird web technology. I remember when I first watched this, like I had a a a basic grounding in web design and, and computer stuff. So I like, I related with Kion being asked to do this stuff with, by somebody who doesn't understand it. Um, and also with the, the mystery of it, like how does a file on a server get corrupted like that? That doesn't work. That doesn't happen. That doesn't make any sense. Um, those bits of things keep me engaged with it. The other thing that keeps me continuously engaged is the interesting shot composition always. And the way that I'd think about it is, now that I'm now that I'm watching through it, previous Kyoani shows that we've seen have had lots of really interesting composition where it's specifically wow that composition. Instead, this show it's more like there's never a boring composition. There's never a boring frame or a flat like just staring at a character's face, shoulder ver shoulder over uh, uh, over the shoulder versus over the shoulder shot reverse shot sort of situation. There's never a standard sequence of standardized shots like here. It, just because of the way the characters are arranged, this shot is more interesting, and there's more dynamicness to it as he like has his shoulders a little bit up and is like looking off to the side, kind of, kind of angrily at her. We come to the opposite side of this effectively shot reverse shot sort of situation, but it's still different and still weird. We frame Haruhi partly out of the thing. There's more dynamicness in every single frame, even here where this could be a much simpler shot. We have Itsuki over in the in, in the corner, half cut off, and this weird like um uh like a, it's part of a doorway or some kind of device like i don't know what the blue thing on the left side of the screen is but it creates a different compacted frame that doesn't necessarily do anything specific for the composition or make the comp composition say anything specific but it makes it more interesting than simple composition right here continuously with the foreground elements and with everything else even here just a simple walking scene we cut off parts of him using using this uh uh this like railing every single scene is like that every single time and that's really cool i, I think that's really cool and it's different from wow every composition every shot is super interesting it's never is a shot boring and that's really powerful because it makes the whole thing feel less boring and feel more more dynamic and that's super cool um the mystery begins we find out some stuff i actually really like this moment uh, uh of just character acting and characterization uh itsuki comes over here as we're doing in internal like monologue stuff uh, goes, picks up the game. Huh? And then little mini tiny head shake. And then there's no like disappointment, just a little, all right, cool. Um, it, the interaction is so snappy and perfect and, and silent and like they're friends enough to get that kind of interaction going. It says something about the way these characters interact with each other. Super neat. Um, love the sunset through the, the wall, getting to golden hour, setting up a, a scene like that. Um, uh, this with the 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 tilt of her body and like all of the different character animation that's going on here is super great. Uh, reminds me in some senses of certain Yamada stuff where we're using isolated portions of a character's uh, uh, body to show different emotions and different stuff. But we understand the whole frame and the feeling of exactly what's like going on on Asahina's face as she does this, as she like nervously smooths her skirt and then twiddles her fingers together like this. Right? It's there's stuff to it there's something to it which is cool um meet this character this character is not who she says she is but we don't really know that yet uh we only find it out to an extent a little bit later love that we drop into here for kyon's inner understanding of a thing as big newspaper headlines and these weird like negative shots the full like spinning newspaper coming hot off the presses sequence is fantastic and using it is great um, so we actually cut from here to the next shot, right? Okay, so there's this where she gets up close. This is, uh, did we see this? Was this in Haruhi where I was talking about, um, using, 
using focus to alter things. I think it was. It might have been in something else. I don't remember. Um, but she moves up really fast to us, and the camera takes a while to autofocus to her or to focus to her, and so does the character who's now dealing with her. It's a really subtle psychological cue that's like, whoa, you're up in my face. Okay, we're, we're good with that. Uh, it's kind of cool. Lots of little tiny things like that all throughout this episode that make it really, again, dynamic and interesting and fun. Um, and also Haruhi's complete lack of respect for other people's stuff, just going through their house, eating their food, which is expired and kind of gross. Uh, also forcing Asahina to eat their food, which is kind of gross, uh, maybe cruel. Um Always foreground objects in in breaking up the frame, big lamp up here, weird objects around, super fun. Um, yeah, weird. I do want to see what other books he's got. Disappearance Diary Revised, Doorbell Prank 2 Tomorrow, The Neat Revolution, uh, Work is Something, Calculator Man, uh, Amen Gellion, Amen, Amen Gellivian Storyboards Volume 1, sick. Uh, essays on stag beetles, the Hitchhiker's Guide to Central South, South America, which is a joke about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, of course. Um, Dictionary of Computer Jargon, Computer Networks, Understanding Lands, cool. Bunch of stuff, couple of jokes. Um, love the. Uh, we'll get to it later when Koizumi uses his attacks. Uh, framing from the outside, framing from inside. When we do do close shots on characters' faces, it's for a uh, snappy moment that actually implies something. Haruhi, of course, is hungry, uh, pulling a hibike and running around a corner. Uh, cool. Back to the place, and everything is weirder. I, I gotta say, this is something that we've seen a couple times now, but Nagato's way of using her powers is so unique and so fun. Just blah, 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 blah. Uh, creating incantations of data it makes so much weird sense for what a character she is it's so perfect okay so we end up here grabbing grabbing bad bad giant cricket um for being 2006 cg the cricket is fine uh the more importantly i think the ways that they mask how shitty the cricket looks are great uh dust clouds they probably to some extent chose to make this a desert in order to do that kind of stuff but i'm not sure and fumofu and also the second raid um Quick little, quick little shill for some other KyoAni shows: uh, Full Metal Panic, Fumofu, and Full Metal Panic: The Second Grade. Both are great. Um, I I like both of those shows a lot. The Second Grade, The Second Raid has one of my favorite villains. Um, uh, Gowron is a fucking awesome villain, and I love him to pieces. And Fumofu is one of my favorite gag comedies. Um, built around the concepts in in Full Metal Panic, which are really perfect for a gag comedy, um, and taking it to the nines. Both are great KyoAni shows and are some of the first KyoAni shows that I saw, except for Hari Suzumiya. I may have actually found out about them because of that, uh, because of that scene, but I don't remember. Okay, Yuki's whole explanation of stuff doesn't make any sense, but it makes perfect sense. You know, how, how it normally does. And uh, we're back. Everything's fixed. Everything's fine. This space is happy and good, and away we can go. But we also wonder just how sinister and how terrifyingly powerful is Yuki and how much of an influence on our current lives has she been having. I don't know. Also, what book is she reading? I would love to know. I just don't. I just don't. I wish that there was an English cover for it, but I, I don't know. Cool. I like this episode a ton. Uh, mystery Sign, really good episode. Uh, fun mystery built into it. I guess maybe that's why they mix it together with the other two in the broadcast. No, honestly, trying to rationalize why the broadcast order is the way that it is is kind of silly because in a lot of cases it doesn't make sense and they're just mixing up the episodes for funsies. Um, so, yeah, I think this should come after after remote island syndrome and it works just fine to do so uh next up is melancholy four which is i think episode like nine in a broadcast order or something it's something like that um i'll oh no it's episode 10 in broadcast order i'm gonna take a breaky thingy do a sinky thingy and be back in a second to watch it and then we'll watch it i think um each of the melancholy episodes re reveals more about the actual timeline because chrono chronological order is just all of the melancholy episodes right next to each other and then all of the more fillery episodes after that um so i think we get more stuff and more revelations here regardless breaky thingy sinky thingy back in a second next episode in a moment see you in a moment peace 
All right, welcome back. We're good to go for broadcast order 10, Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya 4, beep beep timer. Ah, queen of the school. Hello. Hmm. <laughs> Boring. Mm. Woof. I mean, this is this is true. Do you? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, it already is. But that's already what it is. Okay. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Damn. Melancholy. Seriously, please, God. Uh, no OP for this episode? Indeed. Ultra Director. <laughs> hmm. Just the little stinger. I fucking love that. If you need to smash your episode in, just use a little stinger of the OP instead of the whole thing. Ah! So good. But instead, it's... Hi. Nope. No, it's just a maid costume. It's not sabers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Would not use a note. Might as well go and find out. Oh no. <laughs> no, it'll bring you about a lot of different kind of emails. No, 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 no. Poor thing.
<laughs> okay. Bye. Hello, Yuki. Hello, Asahina. Hmm. <laughs> Fully thwarted. Hello. You have an Arbito? Hmm. Bye. Gorgeous. Orange. Red. Little bit spooky now. Hi. Hello. Deliberate, deliberate, deliberate. Nope. Sure. Great. Humans always say. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Must change something, eh? Da ka da. Precisely what are you talking about? No, 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 no. Excuse me? <laughs> Elsa Gorsan, please, no! Why not? Oh! Fucking awesome. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you're like Yuki. Well, you've got some idea. Someone does. No. Nah. I'm gonna keep fighting. Keep running. Jesus. Yeah. God, uh, framing. Ah, yeah, that's yep. <sighs> yeah. Rather not. Ding. Wait, I didn't get stabbed. Hi, Yuki. Dank ass moon. Dank ass Yuki. Sup. You suck.
Uh, conversation between data life forms. Yep, you're not supposed to act. Which is death, I assume. I think Yuki doesn't give a fuck. Uh, sick. Aha. Uh -huh. I love this digital battlefield. Fuck. In cool. Brrr. Fuck. Get the fuck out of the way. That thing. <laughs> Suddenly really fucking awesome a animation everywhere. Eh, it's fine. Nah, she's fine. Jesus, what? Ah! Doesn't that place look familiar? Mm-hmm. Totally no regrets. Yokata ne. Be afraid. They have effectively ultimate power. And you now have a time limit on your relationship. Sick. Nagato? I'm sorry, you had a bunch of shit stabbed through you. That's pretty freaking cool and LCG, but... Good for what it is. Shockingly great for what it is. Glasses. Crap. That's for another show. Uh-huh, hi. <laughs> Donna Gucci, no! Yeah, you should be in shock, my man. Oh, yeah, it's fully true.
Quick transfer. Ah? Oh, wow, so happy. Hey, something interesting happened. It's a mystery. Amazingly, though, her action works. Causes change. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, right, that relationship. I love that. It's been a thing for a while. Except. Oh! Ah. Uh, indeed you do. <laughs> Just backing off like, it's gonna attack. So, enough times to know. Are still... Asahina, that hasn't happened yet. Yep, you have now changed the, that past. Oh, definitely you. Mm-hmm. Nope, you've actually just caused that loop to occur. <laughs> This framing, though, that's special. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but time is different. I love the disconnected rabbit ears. Yes. That is the story. Classified. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Set up, set up, set up, set up. For a thing that everybody hates, but I don't hate it. Thank you, Asahina-san. <laughs> Do you have pictures? <laughs> Should have said it can circle. She showed us. Oh, 
Uh, okay. Pushes him away. Ah, of course. Yeah. Fully, fully businesswoman Asahina san. Big, big yes. Impossible to say. Oh. Hi. Just knows. Oh, cool. It's pretty fucking difficult. Nah, he wouldn't comprehend. Yeah. Not a chance. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> so weird we should investigate Matched up with the teacher. Okay. Drag, 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 drag. <laughs> Damn it. So next up is the day of Sagittarius. I think we'll watch one more. Okay, a few things. Uh, op list episode, always a thing that triggers, uh, ooh, something weird's going on in the back of my mind. I also, I gotta say that I love the way that they do the op list episode by doing the little stinger of the OP melody um, in it, but nothing else. All right, we end up with the true melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, truly feeling melancholic. Um, and then the note. Uh, uh, God, the way that Haruhi moves through space and just, like, just alters things around her is so insane. Um, again, a lot of people have been commenting on the way that I've been talking about that. And they're absolutely right that Haruhi is not a good role model because she's fucking out there and uh, absurd and uses people constantly. Uh, super selfish, super, super narcissistic, super not a good person in general. Um, but I find the other elements of her character and, and again, the way that she reshapes reality around her very literally uh, to be very interesting. Um, I, I gotta say, I love the little bits of character and, I don't know, human 
badness. It's not evil exactly, but like a true hero would delete all the files. Kion is a high school dude and he's like, I'm keeping these for my spank bag, please. Um, yeah. I also love the little snaps in between stuff. Uh, delete the things or not delete the things. Snap, snap. Just the timing on this. As soon as he puts it into the folder, snap, uh, uh, feet go down, snap, Haru, he stands up. Really interesting. Okay, uh, Mikuru stuff, we get real dark out here. Sunset hues, much darker than they have been. Bathe everything in red light, get real spooky with it. Um, the way that this scene plays out makes me think of Higurashi no Naku, Naka. Naku, 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 something, Koroni, um, uh, Higurashi when they cry cicadas stuff. Uh, something about the edge lighting on the characters' faces and the deep sunset tones just snaps that into, into place in my brain, um, because that's how that horrifying show makes itself horrifying. And they really nail this whole sequence as she starts asking questions that in immediately start implying stuff that we can pick up on on a second viewing stuff like a she calls people humans uh and then tries to get him to justify her own actions although she feels no guilt for what she's trying to do she does believe it's the right course of action she's still hesitant to do so it's really scary having somebody like building up to yeah i'm just gonna murder you because that's what's best for the universe uh oh shit and eventually we do this shot for the actual reveal of i'll kill you um the shots get more and more dutch angly more and more unsettled until we jump to this fully flipped around wibbity dibbity shot um the action animation throughout the sequence is really fun and dynamic and cool and all the shots that they choose are the same uh this is a classic like power dynamic sort of a shot uh with uh her looming even from afar being so small he is made smaller um in the frame by the framing and all the, the way that it works it's really good you think it's a joke this isn't a joke. This is murder. Yay. Uh, yeah, I truly want you to die. Um, and we get some pretty classic, like, this is the way that Kyoani does its action scenes. Uh, uh, quick bouts of dynamic, really fun shots into back to stuff, into talking, uh, making it really a conversation. It's super fun. And I think it's really cool. The powers that are in play are really neat. The way that you, the reality starts to swirl out behind us and that we're snapping through realities. The the classroom is now shattered and dilapidated and destroyed. Um, and reforging stuff into other stuff. Kion is no hero. Um, he just is no hero. He's no fighter, backer, person. None of that. He needs somebody here to save him. And we get one, and it turns out it's Yuki Nagato. I also love that we never do a like distinctive shot of them against the giant moon behind them. We just show it from like tiny angles, like here. But we see that there is this giant moon behind them. And I almost want them to do the big the big shot with the character silhouetted against the moon and the knife in hand and like all that stuff but they don't do it they stay away from it instead the universe around them is continuously shifting and shifts into this like scan lined out weirdness of cells and stuff in the background i think it's really fun uh flipping around landing on freaking on a screen that doesn't make sense gives the feeling kind of like in Gurren Lagann when we've got characters fighting within the universe and with the universe itself it gives us that idea they're fighting in a digital space that is way more um the action animation and the effects animation is really nice and solid and good Things like this scene read so well. Um, they're not even really animating Yuki doing each of these these smacks to, to put up a barrier against each attack. But we get the full impression of precisely what she's doing as she does it. Um, from here, we see her hand moving around and, and cr like shoring up the barrier in every, every point uh, in order to protect Kion. And then we see it here with just like a fuzzy arm that's going infinitely fast. Super cool. Uh, grab throw uh or no she just pulls him close for the moment um and eventually she comes in and, and like smacks him out of the way so cool so fun big aerial flip wow thwam shocking um 
something else that I really like is the use of background background coloration. It almost functions like impact frames in the sense that everything behind her is this red green thing, and then those go in. We flash to white and come back, and it's just empty sky. It really really works to cement the difference between the two segments. We also see the glasses fall off and shatter. Uh, super cool. Giant arm things, absolutely terrifying. Stab, stab. But Yuki had a plan, and the plan is complete. This place looks familiar. Hmm. Um, she tells us some interesting things. You know, you gotta be watching out because there's tons of crazy stuff. And if you think about it narratively, this comes right after the the other reveals about Yuki and stuff. And so this is building up on that feeling of, oh shit, there's really crazy stuff going on around Haruhi and there are lots of people circling around her because she is a powerful entity in, in the way that people and powerful organizations would do with different ideas of what should be done about her. Uh, and we are stuck right in the middle of it with zero ability to actually defend ourselves. Why is Kion here? Um, starts to, to really cement those questions in our minds. And I think that's great. Okay, we hop on out of this. The whole Taniguchi sequence, seeing them in this uh, lascivious position, is wonderful and fun. And Haruhi, in fact, is spurred into motion by this craziness. Um, then we get our note from the future Mikuru Asahina. And she is very slightly different. Like, the whole difference in her character design is a slightly, very slightly different jawline, lipstick. And I don't even think that they draw her, like, bustier and more mature. I think Asahita just is that way. Um, some boobage and some stuff. I actually really like when we frame her from the side uh, every time we do. Okay, I, I also really like this frame. We know that she's buttoning up her shirt, but we use Kion's head to, to, to cut it off so that it's not a part of the conversation because we're trying to be mental about this now um, and not be thinking with the penis. <laughs> Important. But uh, these side frames where she's framed like next to the 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 rabbit ears gives a weird feeling to me as though it's intentional. And of course it is, but it works in a way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Cool. Thinking, talking, talking, thinking, 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 thinking. Yuki is great. And Haruhi wants to go seek out some weird shit. Uh, the scene of her just dragging him across the floor is such classic Haruhi. Um, it just, it's just perfect drag uh wonderful fun episode good times i think next up is uh the day of sagittarius uh which is an an espidode and more of a, a a like after episode sort of thing and that sounds like a good thing to me i also i think i remember this episode being one with like a ton of weird and goofy references that i'm probably going to miss all of but uh I remember thinking about it and like rereading rewatch threads and stuff. Regardless, I think we're going to watch it. I'm going to take a breaky thingy, do a sinky thingy, and be back in a second to watch The Day of Sagittarius. I'll see you in a moment. Peace. All right, welcome back. We're good to go for Broadcast Order Episode 11, episode titled The Day of Sagittarius. Let's watch it. Beep beep timer. That's pretty neat. Again, simple old CG. Get that one, eh? There are a lot of references here, I'm sure. Giant, giant revolver guns. Oh, the pink versions, yep. Yuki takes it fully seriously. Was her outfit a reference to something? <laughs> yeah, but you're our leader. Unless you're fucking crazy. <laughs> I will delegate. Okay. Hmm. 
<laughs> it's just a video game. But it's reality. I love the bounciness of that. That one sequence. It's so good. The whole the whole OP is so insane. Okay, one week ago. Okay, so post cultural festival. Oh, timelines, baby. What's he reading? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I doubt it. And no peace for you. She wouldn't she wouldn't knock. Hello. You can talk to me. Wait, that guy. Ah, cool. No. <laughs> Things that haven't happened yet. Weird. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> no, they're just the computer club. Not what we do. Not at all what we do. We are not warriors of justice. We're monsters. We're the monsters now! God, she reads so fast. Well, you did steal their computer. Hmm. <laughs> the computer. 
we're using it. We got a website. <laughs> so well done, indeed. Also, you. Under duress. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course. Sick. A promise and a deal. No. <laughs> she would. She being a hypercomputer monster entity thing. Huge difference. No, thank God. Same framing as the Asahina stuff. Gross. Not words I'd use for you. Holy, however, perhaps. Sacred? No. He does. They wrote the game. Totally. Totally. Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. Just games. Are you sure that's the case? Yeah, but Haruhi really likes that computer. No, it'll hurt Haruhi. <laughs> gotta move my, we gotta move my folders. No. That's bad. That's bad. Never going to learn. Hmm. It's a way to look at it. Don't say the red string of fate. Okay. Mm. Or not. Fair point. Real short distance.
But they gave us the tease of actually fighting, so it'll be great. It'll be super cool. Of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> Why? Nope, she's learning. <laughs> and they're terrible. I wonder what her outfit is a reference to. Oh my god, of course. All Yukis. <laughs> Just infinite Yukis. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of a particular... Actually, he reminds me of Dusty more than... No. Okay. That's just because... That's just because a cute girl got close. But also, no. Danger sense, for sure. Blam, 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 blam. <laughs> it's just another... Oh, no, that's Itsuki. We've switched to a, a semi-classical background. Definitely reminiscent of certain Ginga Uden Setsu things. There's definitely some Ginga stuff. But I, I assume that it's more Yamato. Which I've never seen any of. Strategic. Yuki's going off now. Blah da da blah da da blah da blah blah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Please no. You're going to get killed. Hey. <laughs> also, ambush. <laughs> Macro <laughs> and micro. Well, ah, I see. <laughs> I might watch that.
definitely not cheating. <laughs> Bastards. Bastards. Truly. Therefore, we break the game. <laughs> Granted. Do it. Absolutely. I don't like losing. You should be more worried. What is what is this? Can you actually fight? Nope. Reliant on cheating. Get wrecked. That's probably a reference to something. Die. Blam. <laughs> That motion was... I mean, that's very Haruhi, but it's also something else. Cool shield effect. Boom. Laptops, please. New computers, please. Yep. 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 Thanks for the thanks for the laptops. Yeah. Smack, smack. This baby can hold so many video games. Yuki. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> that is my furniture. That's my furniture. <laughs> If she wants to. Ooh. Yeah, she really didn't want to lose. Cute.
<laughs> oh no. Nope. <laughs> do not pledge do not pledge fealty to that woman. That is a bad idea. Oh, tap 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 tap. Not a lot to talk about in this one, but a very fun episode. I'm definitely going to go look up a trivia thing for it. I'm sure I can find one. All right, I've got a trivia thing up. Boom. All right. Um, so simple, fun pretty fillery type of episode. They just decide to have a computer game battle with a club that's already been established. Yay, easy. I don't think this is even a thing that's in the light novels, uh, but I, I don't know enough to know, and I haven't actually read the light novels. However, uh, there's a lot of references and trivia stuff, um, so I'm going to go through that and figure it out. So this was broadcasted as episode 11 of season 1 and as episode 27 of season 2. Right, sure, it's so annoying. Uh, the president of the Computer Society pretends to be Leader Deslock from Star Blazer's space battleship Yamato. Um, I, I Google that, and it is uh, this dude editing me will put a thing there. Holy shit, it's right on the money. Even with the, like, the crazy shaped glass and everything, it's pretty freaking perfect. Um, neat. Very... Very fun, very goofy. Uh, let me write down a timestamp for putting that in. Cool. Uh, on the cover is a picture of young Captain Avatar, Captain Okita, from Star Blazer Space Battleship Yamato. I knew that we I had recognized that, but we normally see him with a big-ass white beard, uh, so instead he has a brown beard in this one. Excellent. Uh, very famous character design. The president's ship is also destroyed by a weapon similar to the Wave Motion Gun, another reference to Yamato. Uh, the book Yuki is reading at the end is 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. Excellent. Um, one of the Neko Man cat people in Mikuru's spaceship, specifically the muscular one in front, is an homage to the character, character Kinikuman. Okay, doesn't mean anything to me. The computer club president screams glory to the computer club as he be, is being shot down by Yuki. This is an homage to the original Mobile Suit Gundam as many Xeon officers from said anime would shout glory to the principality of Xeon as they would be shot down. Uh, those officers also tended to be battleship captains. Um, cool. Uh, when the SOS Brigade is having a tough time, Haruhi orders Kion to launch the, the, the fucking thing that is censored out, to which Kion replies, I'm launching, which is another tribute to Gundam, where the censored word is the main robot, Gundam, uh, because the word is trademarked, and I'm launching is one of the most famous quotes said by Amuro. That makes sense. There's also a heavily censored picture of the Gundam. Excellent. Uh, Nagato mentions that all ECM and ECCM are uh, activated. Those are electronic character countermeasures, and ECCM counters those. Also a reference to Zetai Karan children, where Espers are fairly commonplace. Uh, cool. Harui says, Shining light on darkness and vanquishing evil is the duty of a warrior of justice. Fully a Sailor Moon reference. Cool. The background, uh, the, the, the background music that accompanied their battle was adapted from the first movement of the Seventh Symph Symphony of Shostakovich and changed the finale of uh, the last movement of the Fourth Symphony of Tchaikovsky. Um, uh, use of classical pieces during Space Fleet Battles is meant to be an homage to the long-running OVA series. Ginga Eiyu Densetsu, no surprise there. Um, yes. The entire crew of Koizumi's fleet all have the Hano... Hano... Mohe? G? face oh i see it's a, a face using hiragana characters got it weird uh and the design of the four laptops used in finally one is based on the epson endeavor blah 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 and they're all labeled espen uh in the episode all with my mice and they use it they, somebody went and found out exactly what laptop models they used cool doesn't matter 
what matters in this episode? Not a lot. It's fun. Um, it's it's very fun, and we get to see some actual like autonomy from Yuki in a weird way, uh, because she does actually really enjoy messing with computer code and and playing with programs. She also seems to not want to lose, which is new for her. She's not just an, a mindless automaton. Has a little bit of something else. Also, I gotta just mention that the whole, this whole thing, just as fast as it is, super fucking sick. Uh, it's, it's really cool, and it works super well. Um, space battles with CG, CG ships and stuff, nothing super fancy, nothing terribly great, but we're also not trying to make scenes out of them. They're just, they're more like just set dressing, uh, that just sort of exists there and we're watching it happen. It's like, okay, that's fine. Um, but this guy, you know, excellent. This is a, this is, it's a fun one-off episode. It's nothing special, nothing too fancy, and I'm not super partial to it particularly. So in, in one sense, I'm glad that we finished watching this one today. Um, that way, next time we can jump straight into, I think we end up with, um, yeah, we end up with two more Melancholy episodes, five and six of Melancholy, and then that technically ends season one pretty effectively uh, at which point we start to move into season two with Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody, which is where we're starting next week. Um, and we're going to be doing Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody and then I guess beginning off on the Endless Eight. Uh, I'm still not sure exactly how I'm going to handle the E8, um, but we'll see. It, it might be that eh, I might I might do a bad thing to myself and just watch through all of them and then make a super cut um, of things that I found interesting about the eight episodes. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. We'll see. I do. I like the episodes a lot in E8, so we'll see. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, and I know a lot of people hate it, but I kind of don't, and I think it's kind of cool. But it is it's eight fucking episodes. So we'll see how I decide to deal with that when we deal with that. For now, uh, uh, some more revelations about Haruhi stuff. Tons of Yuki stuff. Some fun other things that are kind of separate and, and side stuff. And uh, all over good time. We come back to our question about the nature of Haruhi Suzumi and why it impacts me, and I don't really have much more stuff at this point. Um, we're still growing out the character of Haruhi Suzumi, the characters around her, setting her up as she is. She's not changing a lot. Um, mostly everything is happening around her, and we're getting this depiction of all of these powerful entities and powerful characters circling around this locus of power in the universe that seems to be... Haruhi Suzumiya herself, and it's quite interesting. Um, we'll have to see how that how that shifts over time as more occurs, and we start to move from setting up a foundation to actually being able to do stuff with it. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see as it happens. I still don't really have my answer. That's the the main thing that I want to convey at this point is I don't have my answer, and. This week's episodes weren't super ultra mega striking. They were interesting, and, and things about them that stand out to me are the complete lack of any lull in any episode. There's no point in any of these episodes where I feel even the slightest bit bored. Even this episode that is what could be really boring space battles is instead a bunch of dialogue back and forth uh, and, and characters working on things where we don't need to understand the mechanics of the game or the mechanics of the battle. That's not the intrigue of it. Um, it's Instead, it's the character and how they act, which actually reminds me in some ways of Legend of the Galactic Heroes, where the strategic elements are as simple as can possibly be. It's like, well, if we surround them, we win. It's like, oh, who would have thought? Let's do a surround them and we win. No, burst through their center. They're thin. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but it's really the characters that make that show work, and it's the characters that make this show work. So in a weird way, it's a really good choice to riff off of that. Um, makes me want to watch some Yamato at some point. We'll probably get to it at some point certainly Gundam is a thing that's on my radar I am aware that Gundam exists I'm not I'm not totally unaware that Gundam is a thing that exists and keep an eye out on the channel because there will be some possibilities for some certain things that might happen we'll see uh in the future regardless some solid episodes of Hardy Suzumiya I like this show a lot I still like this show a lot knowing what's gonna happen knowing how these things play out and seeing it happen it's still fun and i think that has more to do with the way that it's produced and the flow of the show than anything ex like anything uh extraordinarily interesting about the story itself which is interesting in and of itself i think hmm cool wrap there meet you boo this haruhi see you next week peace